the last lecture, we discussed about the response spectrum method of analysis for multi support excitation. Uh, in that, uh, we derived the uh, response spectrum method of analy analysis for multi support excitation system. The uh, method is uh, developed through random vibration analysis. However, the uh, last portion of the derivation that is the results of the derivation led to a very interesting equation. We use using that equation one can obtain the response spectrum analysis of multi support excitation uh, that is uh, the uh, response spectrum method of analysis can be performed for multi support excitation using the displacement response spectrum of earthquake and a compatible uh, power spectral density function of ground acceleration. This is achieved uh, through an equation uh, that relates the displacement response spectrum of earthquake and the uh, power spectral density function of ground acceleration. Apart from that, uh, a coherence function is needed uh, for, account, uh, for accounting uh, the uh, partial correlation of the excitation that takes place at the uh, between the two supports. We also uh, illustrated uh, the method with the help of two example problems. Today's lecture will concentrate on the cascaded analysis, the uh, use of response spectrum method of analysis uh, for the non-classically damped system. Cascaded analysis uh, is uh, very popular for seismic analysis of secondary system. In fact, uh, the cascade analysis was specifically uh, designed for the earthquake analysis of secondary systems uh, which are there in many structures, especially for industrial structures. Uh, we have many secondary systems. Similarly, in nuclear power plant structures, we have many uh, secondary systems or many of the structures in the nuclear power plant structures are idealized as secondary system. Then uh, we have structures like buildings on the top of which we have uh, a small tower, then the tower is uh, considered as a secondary system. So, uh, there are uh, many uh, such examples of the secondary systems which are used in uh, civil engineering in structures. Now, for these secondary systems, uh, if we wish to uh, find out the earthquake response, then uh, one of the popular uh, ways of doing it is by using response spectrum uh, at the uh, base of the uh, applied at the base of the secondary systems. The motivation for developing the cascaded analysis are twofold. Number one, if we wish to consider the uh, total structure that is the primary and secondary structure together, then the number of degrees of freedom uh, may be very large and uh, therefore, the analysis may entail a uh, lot of computational time. Secondly, the cascaded analysis is performed because uh, the uh, cases where we have secondary systems along with the primary system, then the damping matrix becomes non-classically damped. Uh, for example, if we have a piping system connected uh, to the uh, to a main structure or uh, piping systems supported on the floor of a structure uh, made of concrete, then we have two kinds of damping arising. Uh, similarly, we can have uh, structures in which there is a tower on the top of a building 
and in, uh, in that case the damping of the tower and damping of the building would be different resulting in a non-classically damped situation. So, uh, in order to avoid uh, these non-classical damping, one way is to isolate the two system that is the secondary system and the primary system and analyze them separately. The output of the primary system becomes the input for the secondary system. Uh, for example, if uh, there is a piping system uh, mounted on the floor of a, a particular building, then uh, the response spectrum for the floor become the input for the secondary system or the piping system at the base. Uh, in this uh, kind of analysis where we separate the two systems and analyze them separately, uh, we ignore the interaction effect between the secondary system and the primary system. And in most of the cases it is found that uh, if we ignore this interaction effect, uh, then we do not uh, uh, get much error in the analysis uh, or the response of the uh, secondary system. For this purpose, the flow response spectrum becomes an important thing in the cascaded analysis. The figure 5.5 shows uh, the a secondary system mounted on the floor of a building. They are, it is excited, the building is excited by a ground acceleration. The absolute acceleration is equal to the uh, at the floor is uh, equal to the acceleration of the floor with respect to the base and it is ground acceleration is added to it. It will not be A, it will be G, x double dot G is the ground acceleration. So, x double dot A is the absolute acceleration of the floor, x double dot G is the ground acceleration. So, uh, what is uh, done is that first we uh, remove the secondary system uh, from the primary system, only retain the mass of the secondary system to the primary system, analyze it for the uh, given ground acceleration and uh, the results of the analysis provide the time history of the acceleration at the flow level. Then uh, to this time history of acceleration, we add the ground time history of acceleration to obtain the absolute time history or or time history of the absolute acceleration. This uh, time history of absolute acceleration then becomes input for the piping system which is uh, mounted on the floor. We assume that the uh, piping systems are attached to the floor in a way that one can assume ends or the supports of the piping system to be fixed. Thus, for a fixed end support, uh, there is a acceleration at support or uh, that acceleration uh, is the absolute acceleration of the floor. So, by knowing the time history of the absolute acceleration of the floor, one can find out the response spectrum of the uh, floor for the given ab absolute uh, value of the acceleration time history. So, first uh, the flow response spectrum is obtained from that time history and once we get the absolute uh, or the, uh, the response spectrum for the absolute acceleration of the time history, then uh, that response spectrum is uh, inputted at the base of the piping system. 
and we carry out the usual response spectrum method of analysis uh, that we have discussed. In this case, um, we can consider the basis uh, to be a, a single support excitation case that is uh, we can assume that there is no time lag uh, between the or phase lag between uh, different supports and all the supports are uniformly excited by the time history of the absolute acceleration. Uh, if uh, two ends of the uh, supports or some of the supports are say uh, connected to a uh, to another floor uh, or the supports are connected at uh, different floors uh, then uh, the supports are excited by different excitations in that case uh, one can uh, use the response spectrum method of analysis for multi support excitation that you have discussed before. Uh, therefore, in the cascaded analysis uh, one can uh, carry out a response spectrum method of analysis uh, by uh, decoupling the secondary system from the primary system finding out the floor response spectrums in case more than one number of floats are utilized for supporting uh, the secondary system at uh, each support of the secondary system if uh, the excitations are different then also one can perform the response spectrum method of analysis. So, this uh, has uh, become a very uh, popular technique for finding out the earthquake response of secondary system in uh, structures and specially uh, for nuclear structures uh, these secondary uh, systems are considered in a uh, different uh, way in the sense that these secondary systems are not clubbed along with the primary system and the total uh, system is analyzed for uh, the earthquake excitation because in that case the number of degrees of freedom that is involved becomes too many. An example problem is solved here to illustrate the use of the response spectrum method of analysis for uh, secondary system. Uh, this is a building frame. Uh, in this building frame uh, we have a secondary system. The secondary system has a mass m by 4 and it has a length l by 4 the stiffness is k by 4 whereas the main building uh, it has a stiffness of k and this is the mass of the two floor damping for the secondary system is 2 percent damping for the primary system is 5 percent uh, this is an exercise problem given um, in chapter 3 that is uh, the uh, response analysis for the deterministic ground motion uh, in that uh, this uh, problem is given as an exercise problem uh, to solve. Now for uh, this system for the specified uh, ground acceleration here the specified ground acceleration is taken as the L centro uh, uh, ground excitation. Uh, we perform a time history analysis. Uh, we can perform the time history analysis either in time domain or in the frequency domain and find out the time history of the absolute acceleration for the top flow level. And for that first we find out the time history of the relative acceleration of the top floor that is the relative acceleration with respect to the base and to that we add the time history of the ground acceleration. So, that provides a time history of the absolute acceleration of the uh, 
top floor. Then for that time history of absolute acceleration, uh, we obtain a corresponding response spectrum, response spectrum of acceleration. How to obtain the response spectrum of acceleration that we had discussed before, that is we take a single degree freedom system. The base or the support of the single degree freedom system is subjected to the time history of the absolute acceleration that we have obtained. Then for different um, frequencies uh, for the uh, single degree freedom system that is by varying k and m we can have a different frequencies and corresponding to different time periods. Uh, for that uh, we can obtain the displacement response spectrum first. Then from displacement response spectrum we derive the pseudo velocity spectrum and from that we can derive the pseudo acceleration spectrum or the acceleration spectrum uh, that we generally use. These response spectrums are obtained now for uh, the damping that is the required damping in, uh, and in this case this damping is 2 percent because the secondary system has a damping of uh, 2 percent. So once we have the response spectrum of acceleration for 2 percent damping then for this secondary system a excitation record acts at the base of the support whose response spectrum now is known and therefore uh, the time period for the secondary system is can be worked out with the help of the stiffness and the mass and once we know the uh, frequency of the secondary system from that we can get the time period corresponding time period and for that time period one can obtain the acceleration spectrum ordinate and using that acceleration acceleration spectrum ordinate we, uh, we can obtain the force uh, that would be acting um, for this uh, system. Since it is a single degree freedom system we need to only consider one mode or there will be only one force static force that will be acting onto the secondary system and we can find out the bending moment shear force and the top displacement of the secondary system. Uh, this problem is uh, uh, made easy by providing only one degree of freedom system. However, one can have a structure which is not a single degree freedom system like this. In fact, there could be a piping system in which there could be 2, 3, 4 supports and in that case at all the supports we can assume that the same time history of absolute acceleration would be acting for which the response spectrum we have obtained and then carry out the usual response spectrum method of analysis for the piping system. The result uh, for the you know, this problem uh, is uh, uh, shown here. The time period of the secondary system was uh, obtained as 0 0.811 second. The displacement flow displacement response spectrum is given over here. We can multiply the flow displacement response spectrum with the omega square in order to get the pseudo acceleration response spectrum. Once we get the pseudo acceleration spectrum then corresponding to this time period 0.811 second one can obtain the value of the spectral acceleration and multiply that spectral acceleration with the mass that would give the force acting on the top of the cantilever resulting in a lateral displacement at the top 
and the corresponding uh, base shear. The result that we obtained from the uh, cascaded analysis was 0.8635 meter as the deflection of the top of the cantilever, whereas a proper time history analysis for the entire structure considering the secondary system or the secondary system was included into the entire structure. So, that it becomes a composite primary uh, secondary system we call it as PS system. For that we constructed a C matrix for the primary system the C matrix is, is constructed using the assumption of Rayleigh damping that is, uh, is a proportional damping with 5 percent uh, critical damping for the main structure. The C matrix can be obtained as C is equal to alpha times uh, m plus beta times k that is how one can obtain the C matrix for the main structure and then add on to that the damping for the secondary system coupling between the uh, terms of the damping matrix between the primary and secondary system is set to 0. So, with that C matrix and considering the total K matrix of the system that is in obtaining the K matrix of the system we include the degree of freedom at the top of the cantilever. Uh, so, with, uh, with that K matrix and with that C matrix and the corresponding M matrix one can perform a time history analysis uh, for the entire system subjected to the ground acceleration at the base. The result of that provided a maximum displacement of the cantilever as 0.9163. So, we can see that the actual time history analysis for the PS system and the cascaded analysis provided uh, nearly the same response and in this uh, the uh, response analysis becomes easier in the sense that we are solving uh, two uh, problems. Uh, each problem is uh, solved using response spectrum method of analysis, but the degrees of freedom for each problem becomes less uh, compared to the complete PS system. Next we uh, consider the application of the response spectrum method of analysis for non-classically damped system. The non-classically uh, damped systems are ones in which we have a system like this in which there is a main system and in that main system say we have a tower. Then this tower uh, may be made of steel, this uh, building is made of concrete, both of them uh, have different damping. So, the construction of the C matrix for the composite system that is to be obtained first. So, in this, in this case the C matrix is obtained by first obtaining the damping matrix for the primary structure, separately obtaining the damping matrix for the secondary system. So, here say uh, the main structure has 3 degree of freedom. So, we obtain the damping matrix corresponding to these 3 degrees of freedom by assuming it to be a mass and stiffness proportional. So, we first find out the frequencies of the primary system and in that we completely decouple this secondary system. So, from that we uh, get the damping matrix after obtaining the values of alpha and beta. So, once we get this uh, matrix damping matrix for the primary system we put it over here it will be 3 by 3 matrix. Similarly, one can obtain the damping matrix for the secondary system 
say it is also having a 3 degree of freedom. So, using a modal damping ratio of 2 percent, we construct the CS matrix in the same fashion as we have done for the primary system and this uh, CS is the damping matrix for the secondary system. The coupling between the primary system and the secondary system that we set to 0 because that is not explicitly known. So, that is how one can construct a C matrix and this C matrix is non-classically damped because uh, we have got two types of damping in the system. Uh, once we get the uh, damping matrix for the entire system, uh, then one can consider the entire system together that is uh, the system would be a, a six uh, system of 6 degree of freedom. We write down the stiffness matrix corresponding to this 6 degrees of freedom that becomes the K matrix. The mass matrix becomes a diagonal mass matrix having uh, uh, 6 masses. So, with the help of this uh, mass matrix and the stiffness matrix, we obtain the undamped mode shifts and frequencies with the help of K and M. And once we get these undamped frequencies and mode shifts, then uh, one can use uh, the decoupling, try to decouple the equation of motion by writing phi t c phi, phi t k phi and phi t m phi of course will be diagonal. Phi t c phi will not become a diagonal matrix. Uh, note that here the phi matrix will be a 6 by 6 size. This is also a 6 by 6 matrix and since it is non-classically damped therefore phi t c phi won't be a diagonal matrix there will be off diagonal terms. By ignoring the off diagonal terms that is uh, by uh, diagonalizing the phi t c phi matrix one can decouple the entire equation of motion and the di from the diagonal terms of the damping matrix one can obtain the modal damping ratios in each mode of vibration. Once we get that then uh, one can use the usual response spectrum method of analysis because we know the modal damping for each uh, mode of vibration. Uh, therefore, one can obtain uh, the necessary spectral ordinates for acceleration for a given damping and given time period. Once we get the equivalent set of lateral forces uh, in each mode of vibration, then we can apply them and carry out the usual static analysis performed in the case of response spectrum method of analysis. Another problem of uh, this time, uh, this type quite often uh, is encountered uh, in structural engineering that is uh, the problem of soil structure interaction where the effect of the soil is replaced by springs and dash dashboards. For example, here is a, is a frame which has got three non-support degrees of freedom. At the supports, the springs indicate the soil stiffness and they indicate the soil damping. Generally, the vertical spring stiffnesses are made very high so that effectively one can assume that this base cannot go down or it is the base degree of freedom in the vertical direction is locked. We only permit the lateral movement of the bases. Also the rotational springs can be introduced in order to take care of the rotation that can take place because of the flexibility of the foundation. So, in that case 
the k matrix for the structure would be these three translation plus these three translation the base plus these three rotations. So, that becomes the k matrix and one can obtain this k matrix by usual condensation procedure. The mass matrix also will be 9 by 9. The rotational masses we can give some rotational masses to the system or also we can set them to 0 if we wish to ignore it. Then the damping matrix for the entire system consists of two parts. One is the structures damping matrix which will be 3 by 3 and which can be obtained from the damping specified damping ratio for the structure say it is if it is concrete then it will be 5 percent damping. Uh, for that 5 percent damping one can obtain the damping matrix for the superstructure. The other part of the damping matrix is the C soil and this C soil matrix uh, uh, can be obtained from the damping coefficient uh, provided uh, for the soil system. Generally this soil damping matrix is a diagonal matrix. The coupling between the structure and the soil damping matrices this is again set to 0. Uh, once we have uh, these uh, damping matrix then as before uh, we can multiply this damping matrix uh, or we multiply this damping matrix with phi t and post multiplied by phi that is phi t c phi is obtained and phi t c phi is not generally a diagonal matrix. So, uh, we uh, ignore the off diagonal terms and from the diagonal terms we obtain the modal damping in each mode of vibration and then carry out the um, usual response spectrum method of analysis. Note that while performing the response spectrum method of analysis, we retain these springs at the basis that is uh, this lateral springs and the rotational springs uh, they are retained and uh, then perform the uh, static analysis corresponding to uh, each mode of vibration with its equivalent static lateral load. Next we uh, come to uh, seismic coefficient method. So far uh, we were discussing about the response spectrum method of analysis for uh, the uh, non-classically damped system, for classically damped system, for multi support excitation, for single support excitation and also how we perform the response spectrum method of analysis for cascaded system. Now we uh, discuss uh, another very popular uh, method for obtaining the design forces in structures for uh, the earthquake and uh, this is uh, obtained using what is known as the seismic coefficient method. Seismic coefficient method also prescribes a set of equivalent static lateral load and that equivalent static lateral load is applied onto the structure. Then the structure is analyzed statically to find out the its responses and those responses are uh, assumed to be equal to the maximum forces that the structure would have experienced if the same earthquake for which the response spectrum uh, is uh, constructed uh, was applied to the structure. Note that uh, the response spectrum of acceleration can also be used here uh, in order to obtain the seismic coefficient that we will discuss little later. Uh, however, uh, not necessarily that the seismic coefficient is extracted uh, from the response spectrum uh, 
or acceleration response spectrum of earthquake, but sometimes the seismic coefficient is uh, somewhat different than the coefficient that we obtain from the response spectrum. So, in, in those cases both the response spectrum and the seismic coefficient and values for different time periods that are prescribed. In most of the codes of practice both response spectrum method of analysis and the seismic coefficient method of analysis are prescribed for earthquake analysis and design of structures. In fact, seismic coefficient method of analysis is more popular compared to the response spectrum method of analysis because it is purely a static analysis. We do not have to even obtain the time period or the frequency of the structure and the mode shapes of the structure in the case of seismic coefficient method. The time period of the structure is obtained with the help of some empirical formula and the uh, mode shape or the distribution of the uh, load along the height of the structure that is uh, obtained with the help of again some empirical recommendation. Uh, therefore, we do not require the uh, mode shape for the structure. The uh, method consists of the following step using total weight of the structure the base shear is obtained by this simple formula uh, given in equation 5.34 that is V b is equal to weight of the structure multiplied by C h that is a called the seismic coefficient uh, uh, which is uh, generally prescribed and this seismic coefficient is uh, time period dependent. Then uh, we uh, obtain the base shear uh, using this equation uh, sorry uh, first we obtain the base shear using this equation that is 5.34 uh, then once we get the base shear uh, then this base shear is distributed as a set of lateral forces along the height of the structure and for obtaining these uh, load at different flow levels or along the height of the building this formula 5.35 is used there we multiplied V b by a function of height of the floor and this function of height of the floor that is F h i bears a resemblance with that for the fundamental mode of the structure. They are not the same, but it has a resemblance. Thus, we can see that here the loads at different uh, flow levels F i uh, that we obtain from the total base shear. The loads at different floors that we obtain from this formula if they are added together then uh, they would finally will be equal to V b that is the base shear. After we have obtained this uh, force F i for different floors then this uh, force is applied to the structure statically in order to obtain the values of the internal forces in different uh, members of the structure and uh, those forces may be combined along with other forces uh, that is the forces due to the dead load or live load. Then we obtain the design forces for individual members of the structure. Uh, mean most of the time both uh, seismic coefficient uh, method and in the response spectrum method of analysis the load that is obtained in each mode of vibration in the case of response spectrum method of analysis the load F i that we obtained in the seismic coefficient method of analysis is uh, divided by a factor r which is called a reduction factor. This reduction factor reduce the total load which is coming onto the structure uh, due to earthquake 
it is intentionally done uh, so that under the actual earthquake the structure undergoes an inelastic excursion. And this inelastic excursion is a very important uh, thing for all earthquake analysis of structures uh, uh, because we wish to uh, design the structure for certain ductility. This uh, effect of ductility and the reduction factor will be discussed later on uh, when we will be discussing about the nonlinear analysis of structures due to earthquake. Different uh, course provide different recommendations for the values or expressions of CH and the function of HI. The distributional lateral force uh, which is given in most of the code cannot be fully uh, justified from the theoretical point of view, but some kind of justification can be put forward for this distribution. If we uh, look at the uh, first mode lateral load in the case of response vector method of analysis, then it will be like this the mode participation factor for the first mode this is rho 1. W j is the weight of the jth floor corresponding to that there is a mode shape coefficient in the first mode and that is case multiplied by S a 1 by g that is the spectral acceleration for the first mode that is normalized with respect to g. So, that uh, it finally becomes mass times acceleration w by g becomes the mass and mass time acceleration becomes the force. So, this is a uh, typical lateral force that we obtain in each mode of vibration in the response spectrometer of analysis. Now, if we concentrate only on the first mode of vibration then these uh, spectral acceleration the mode shape and the mode participation factor all of them correspond to the first mode only. And with the help of this formula one can find out a force at different flow levels j. Now, we can obtain the ratio of the force acting at any particular flow level and the total force. The total force means the base shear. So, uh, this ratio can be expressed like this that is W j multiplied by phi j 1 and this is a summation of W j and phi j 1 over all the flows giving the value of base shear. So, the floor load that is for the jth floor the lateral load can be expressed as the base shear that is this is nothing but is equal to base shear V V multiplied by W j into phi j 1 divided by some summation of W j and phi j 1. In the next step we see that this particular formula is converted into W j into H j and uh, at the bottom we in, in place of W j into phi j 1 we write W j into H j. Uh, this means that we are assuming a linear variation of the deflection of the structure at the first mode or a triangular variation with a, a value of unity at the top of the floor. So, if you if we assume that at the top of the floor the uh, val, uh, unit value uh, is there for a first mode then and at other floors the value of the mode shape coefficient will be H j divided by the total height of the building. And since the total height of building is there both in the numerator and the denominator that cancels out, 
and as a result of that we get this particular formula. Now up to this uh, one can justify uh, in that the assumption uh, which is made is that the first mode shape of the building uh, is a, a linear mode shape or a, a triangular uh, variation. Now in the codes we get the distribution of the load at different flow levels uh, is obtained with the help of this kind of formula that is base shear is multiplied by Wj into Hj to the power k and here also it is Hj to the power k. k uh, is a coefficient and this coefficient if it is 1 then it is a linear variation and if it is uh, other than 1 then the variation become non-linear that is the in that case the first mode shape is assumed to be a non-linear variation. So, in the case of k is equal to 2 it becomes a quadratic variation uh, similarly for k is equal to 3 or k is equal to 0.5 we get uh, different kinds of non-linear variation of the first mode shapes. Uh, in the course of practice uh, the values of k that is adopted that is also prescribed. So, to some extent one can justify the distribution of the lateral forces in the seismic coefficient method of analysis. Uh, next uh, the formula that we use for calculating the base shear uh, that also could be justified to some extent uh, from the theoretical point of view. If we look at the expression for the base shear uh, in any particular mode, uh, then this is uh, the sum of the lateral forces that uh, is obtained at different flow levels in the ith mode and in turn that can be written in this particular fashion uh, which we just uh, have discussed. Here the lambda i is the ith mode participation factor, SAI denotes the spectral acceleration corresponding to the ith mode. Now, this can be written as V b i now can be written as W i e into S a i by g. W i e is called the effective weight or effective modal weight uh, for the structure and this is nothing but sum of the uh, W j phi j i multiplied by lambda i. So, this is uh, not summation, this is W j multiplied by phi j i multiplied by lambda i that gives W i e that is the effective modal weight in the ith mode. Now, if we carry out the epsom technique, then the base shear that we obtain in the ith mode, the absolute value of this that is simply added for all the modes and that gives an upper bound to the base shear, actual base shear because we have discussed before that epsom method provides a conservative estimate, estimate of the response quantities. So, thus the if V v is the actual base shear, then that actual base shear will be less than this value that is epsom value of or epsom combination of the base shears. So, this V v i now is replaced uh, by this expression and as a result of that we can write down S a i by g into W i e. If we assume that the spectral acceleration remains same in all modes and is equal to that of the first mode, then we can replace S a i by g by S a 1 by g and that will remain constant for all modes and then this can be taken out and uh, then the summation is only for W i e and sum of the W i e that is effective weight uh, at any particular mode or summed up 
over all the modes will result in the total weight of the building. So, the base shear now can be written as uh, V b is equal to S a 1 by G multiplied by W and uh, the seismic coefficient method prescribes uh, the value of V b to be equal to W multiplied by a seismic coefficient. Now, if the seismic coefficient happens to be equal to S a 1 by G, then we see that the V b the base shear that is used in the case of seismic coefficient method is nothing but the base shear that we obtain for the structure by considering only the first mode. So, that is how one can uh, justify the calculation of the base shear for seismic coefficient method and in many codes of practice the seismic coefficient C h and uh, spectral acceleration they are the same. As a result of that the base shear calculation uh, that is obtained in the seismic coefficient method that is equivalent to the first mode base shear in the case of response spectrum method of analysis. At this stage uh, we can summarize some of the important issues related to the equivalent lateral load analysis of structures for earthquake before we go to the next section of our discussion that is uh, the seismic code provisions. Uh, first thing uh, that we discussed is uh, the about the response spectrum method of analysis. We said that it is an unique concept uh, which is there in earthquake engineering. Response spectrum method of analysis was developed specifically for designing the structures for earthquake. This is a partly dynamic and partly a static uh, because the first part of the analysis requires uh, the evaluation of the mode shapes and frequencies which uh, uh, are the dynamic analysis of the structure. And once we have the mode shapes and frequencies uh, then uh, rest of the part is a static part. Equivalent static load that is obtained in each mode of vibration is exact for single point excitation system and it can be obtained from the fundamental equations of the multi degree freedom system. However, when you are uh, combine when you combine the static uh, load effects in each mode of vibration to find out the total response, they are the load combination is uh, approximate and there are three combination rules. These three combination rules are the APSAM, SRSS, CQC. The APSAM rule provides a conservative estimate of the responses and the uh, SRSS rule uh, provides a, a, a better result in case of the well separated frequencies of the structure. Uh, when we have closely spaced uh, frequencies then we obtain in place of SRSS CQC rule in which the modal correlation effect is taken into consideration. After that we discuss about a response spectrum method of analysis extended for multi support excitation. It was first derived by Q region through random vibration uh, approach, but the end result was very interesting. It requires uh, additionally a coherence function and the relationship between response spectrum of displacement with power spectral density function. Uh, then we uh, discussed uh, uh, how response spectrum method of analysis can be utilized for uh, the secondary system and response spectrum method of analysis can be utilized uh, for non-classically dense uh, dam system. After that uh, we uh, discussed the basis of the seismic coefficient method of analysis uh, as it is quite popular with the earthquake engineering community. Uh, 
and it has been uh, observed that the seismic coefficient method of analysis uh, is essentially based on the first mode response. However, the mode shifts of the first, uh, uh, first mode is approximated by different formulas and the time period of the first mode is calculated by some empirical formula. Thank you.